I'm Tracy, I'm with KCI Acelity, and I'm just gonna spend a few minutes going over just doing a basic back dressing with you today and, and some things about the pump. So with the back dressing, the drape is simple, one, two, blue feature. If you've done back before, you know that. Side one is the sticky side, you take that off first. Side two is just a stiffener, just like on a tegaderm, and then the blue tab comes off. To do a vac dressing, you simply want to cut vac drape to do what we call picture framing the wound. And the reason you want to do picture framing is because you don't want this black foam to overlap onto the good skin. You never want this black foam to overlap on the good skin. So if you've protected it, then you don't have to worry about that. So once that's down, then you can take your foam and you can either cut it like this or you can cut it into a solid piece. Really depends on the shape or size of your wound, but I prefer this technique because I can do it really quickly. So what I'll do is I'll fill the wound bed in with grainy foam. And what this grainy foam is doing inside your wound is it's removing infectious material, it's reducing the edema of the wound bed, which is increasing the perfusion of blood flow to the wound, and it's also bringing those wound edges in. And at the bottom of the wound, it's actually doing something that we call microstrain, where it actually stretches the cells of the wound bed up into the struts of the foam, causing those, foam, those cells to stretch, which causes them to proliferate, and you get that rapid granulation tissue. So the importance of that is that the dressing changes should be done every 48 to 72 hours, and no longer than 72 hours. Because if you don't, then it can cause ingrowth of tissue into the foam, and it will be more difficult and more painful to remove it from your patient. So dressing changes every 48 to 72 hours. The other thing that's really important with VAC is that the VAC not be in place, the dressing not be in place and hooked up to the VAC without negative pressure being applied to the wound, two hours maximum in a 24 hour period. So if something goes wrong in the middle of the night or even during the day, you lose your seal, you get some kind of alarm to go off, it's very important that you take care of that alarm and not allow it to sit on the wound because this does not absorb drainage. It's about 80% air, it's open pore size. So if this is just sitting in the wound and it's not being hooked up to suction, all of that infectious material is sitting in the wound bed and after a couple of hours it starts growing things. So very important for you to know that. So once you get the, the foam into the wound, then you take your drape and you seal the wound off. S most people like to do a shingling technique just because you make sure you get that nice good seal, especially if it's in the sacrum area, you can seal it off. Once it's sealed off, then this is what your dressing will look like. What I want you to do, of course it will be sealed, I want you to cut at least a quarter size hole to put your track pad on. And the reason for that is, in the track pad, as you look at the track pad, you'll see two small openings in that track pad on the inside. What that will do is if you don't cut your hole big enough, that drape will actually block one of those openings and you'll get a block tubing alarm with your pump. So make sure you cut at least a quarter size hole. Once you put the track pad down, then this is what your dressing is going to look like, okay? So then you'll take that and you'll hook it up to the canister itself on the pump, making sure your clamps are open, and then you turn your pump on. This is the info back. This is what you guys are using in house here at St. Luke's. And so you turn the pump on. To change the canister, you simply push that button. The canister will pop out to put it in. You slide it in, lock it in place. The alarms that you may get with this is canister full. Of course, change the canister if it's full. You may get a leak alarm. If you get a leak alarm, simply find where the leak is on the dressing, take a piece of drape, and patch it up. The other alarm may be canister inactive or, or therapy inactive, and if that means somebody paused it and they didn't restart it, so you just need to restart therapy. And then you may get an alarm that's battery low. So make sure that this is always plugged in when your patient's in bed. And what you simply have to do once the pump is on is just push OK, and then you can turn the therapy on and off there. Okay, and then this is a leak detector. It'll tell you if you have a leak in your dressing or not. So, pretty simple. Any questions about anything? All right.